Hey everyone, welcome to Mind Pump. In this episode, we talk about why dips are better than the bench press. Yeah, I just said that. In the second half of this episode, we answer four questions from our Mind Pump Media Instagram account. Questions like, how do I get a Christmas tree back? Also, what is an ideal number of sets and reps in a workout to build the maximum muscle? In other words, what is the sweet spot? Finally, do you have friends and family that are either getting into fitness or are really into fitness? Well, we have short clips that you can share with them at our Mind Pump Clips channel right here on YouTube. Go over there and subscribe and share the clips. All right, enjoy the show. Parallel bar dips are better than the bench press. Oh, yeah. Ooh, controversial what? today, huh? No. Let's go there. Oh, uh, you didn't tell you, us that. For overall, if you look at the, the whole picture, for <clears throat> overall strength, overall muscle development, uh, carry over to the real world. Uh, dips mm. are better. They're just I, a better exercise. I'm pretty sure I can get behind this. Wow, sure. I don't know if I can. Yeah. It, you know what it is? Sell me, please. Well, I, mean, I, I want to hear your I want to hear your logic. Strength, uh, I would say, you know, in terms of translation of, um, you know, usable strength, I think that, uh, you know, you can make an, a good argument for that. Yeah, so exactly. So it's got a greater range of motion. Than a bench press. Okay. Uh, if you do it right, you're going to get better shoulder stability and strength. Mm -hmm. It's closed chain, so you're manipulating your body weight. So it's like a pull up versus a pull down, almost. Not quite, yeah. but almost, right? I mean, the only downfall is the loading, right? So you're going to get that from bench press. You're going to get like a, a lot heavier. Oh, I just did them today. Load. Loaded. I got yeah. a, I got a belt. You know, one of the cha belt chains. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, but you're loaded. loaded. I'm you just saying, in terms of like, you know, really increasing the load substantially. I, I you know, bench yeah, that's press where does that's, have it. That's where I'm. I I don't see myself. I'm trying to think of what the most I ever loaded my dips were. Well, think about it. you already have your body weight. So right, you're right, already so you going to have 200 and whatever, 20 pounds, 230 pounds. So a hundred pound loaded on you, it's going to be 330 pound press. Yeah. I don't know if I've done a hundred pound dip, the body weight dip. So today- you know, I, don't, I think the biggest I'd normally do is like a 45 pound plate back. I, don't, I haven't done that in a long time. So I've done- oh, Actually, no, I've done more with the kettlebell. You're right. Well, okay. Fair enough. We'll say like, okay. Yeah. I mean- Now uh, I want to go test it. Now I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I haven't benched- 300 pounds in a long time just because of the way it affects my yeah, shoulder and pec insertion. But to, you know, the other day I did a total of 300 pounds on the bear, on the bar dips. Now that sounds like such a weenie excuse when you say it like that. I know, but that's including. <laughs> I haven't done it because my pec insertion. I know. <laughs> What are you gonna do, bro? Ow. Raise your hand if you've had five injuries in the last two weeks. Oh. <laughs> <But> <laughs> that's a low blow, bro. Dang. No, it's that's not. A, you started. That's it. a low blow. No, you know what? No, you know what? Uh, you're right. However, Ooh, I, my uh, uvulus. Yeah. How, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. what it says. But yeah. I, I did load the other like a, a week ago. I loaded a um, hundred pound uh, weights around my waist, which which is over three hundred pounds. Yeah. on the dip, and I did like two reps, which was yeah, hard. I guess, I guess you're right. Yeah, I mean, I've done that with like. A hundred pound kettlebell, like attached, and you know, adding. I mean, I wasn't. I'm not three hundred pounds, but you know, close. Close. I think it's. You know what it is? Is the um, bench press gets a lot of value because of the bodybuilding aspect of it. It's. It's probably. A, it's. It's a better just chest exercise. Okay. Yeah. That you. Yeah. That's a. And and that's probably the people that are going to probably jump on this and get all right. crazy, right? Like, no way you're going to say uh, that. That's yeah. When you talk about aesthetics, then it gets. But I, you set the table, right? You said yeah. overall. You yes. Know what so overall and uh, just overall muscle. I mean, everything from core stability to shoulder mobility to chest, shoulders, triceps. Yeah, uh, triceps, even forearm and grip, grip yeah. stability, like. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I could see, I could see you making the case for that. Obviously, if you're, if, uh, if I'm coming from a, a, a bodybuilding perspective and I want to develop my chest, I mean, I think dips are one of the most underrated things that you could, so I, I for chest, yeah, for yep. chest, for sure. Um, but I, I, I would still rank the, the barbell bench press. You know press what's funny is that exercise. there's, with the dips, I did not notice this with bench press. <clears throat> okay. So with dips. What I noticed, and as, as long as I was careful with how I overloaded it over time and I controlled the stability and I worked through appropriate ranges of motion and, the, and then increased my ranges of motion appropriately. So that's all, you know, let's, let's remember all that, right? My shoulder stability got better over time as mm -hmm. I got stronger with dips. That's not the case with the bench press. Yeah. What you'll notice with the bench press, if you only bench press- Diminishing returns. Is, yes, over time, yeah. you actually start to get shoulder stability issues and you have to throw a bunch of other things in. 
with the dips, it was as if the dips were themselves improving my shoulder stability. And I just think it's the ang angle and the range of motion. Now you got to do it appropriately because yeah. you could overdo it and you could, you know, go through a range of motion you don't control and hurt yourself. This, but it's just a healthier, I think if you do it right, a healthier exercise. Yeah, too. this reminds me, I was trying to make that argument a long time ago for ring dips, just in terms of like, if I was to increase the difficulty of an exercise that has like a really good uh, transferable strength, uh, in terms of addressing the stability of the shoulder joint in general, like ring dips is like as is, is hard a, of an exercise as you can do <coughs> yep. in terms of that uh, and, and having benefit to it and not having that sort of a detrimental effect because it was on that level for me for bench press inevitably I'd hit this point where, you know, I, I would feel almost like a breaking point. Like I was going to lose, you know, shoulder stability. Yeah. I was going to have some yep. kind of a breakdown where it may lead to a strain and injury, like something. Uh, and, and then I would have to kind of back off either regress or, you know, move on to a different type of an exercise. So like f in terms of, um, you know, having that constant benefit, I think, you know, dips well, do have that. We, we can't understate the, the value of, of novelty too, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I, I had a question asked in my uh, my story yesterday, and it, it was like, you know, is you know squat the best exercise overall, best exercise this time? And I said, I mean, it is until it isn't. Yeah, and and that, that I mean, it's one of the better exercises. That's right, you're right. It, it is until it's it isn't. But if if all you do is o only squat and you never do a Bulgarian split squat, like now Bulgarian split squat mm -hmm. is the best exercise for you. True. So. If you are a, a traditional barbell bench presser all the time and you never go over and do weighted dips, oh my God, mm -hmm. like it, huge, huge value. You know, what's, it, you know what's funny too about uh, the bench press? If you look at like, I love going back and looking at old time strong, you know, they would call them strong men, but there were women that did it as well, but mostly men, old time strong men and the way that they worked out and what they considered to be feats of strength. The bench press didn't enter into those types of competitions till way later. Yeah. They didn't even have bench presses set up. They would have a bench. And if you wanted to do you a bench just, press, you snatch it and then you'd have yeah, to lay back yeah. and yeah. do it. And so nobody did a bench press. The number one exercise to, to demonstrate your overall strength was uh, bench press. anything over your head. Bench, yeah. Anything over your head. And then it was like a hip lift, right? They didn't even do squats. They would do like a hip lift yeah. or a bent press dips and pull-ups were always in the fray because that was gymnastics. Yeah. That, those were old school exercises. So these men and women developed these incredible physiques with almost exclusively without the bench press. And that includes developed shoulders and chest. What's up everybody? Here's the giveaway for today. Maps, power lift, here's how you win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Also subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications, do all those things. Uh, if we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section that you won free access to MAPS Powerlift. Also, we got a sale going on right now. MAPS Symmetry and MAPS Strong. Both 50% off, only happening this month. If you're interested, you want to learn more, or you just want to sign up, click on the link at the top of the description below to get yourself set up. All right, here comes the show. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about um, some of those old pictures. Have you ever seen the one where they're lifting a literal bench full of people yeah. over their head? Yep. Like, that was their bench press. Yeah. You know, it was a <laughs> bench, bench press. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like some of those feats of strength, completely different goals that they had. It is. And if you think about it again, a bench press, I'm not saying it's a bad exercise. It's in every, almost every program, if not every program that we have. It's a great compound lift, so it's yeah. not bad. Oh, I but love the bench press. It gets, um, I think it gets a lot of praise at the expense of other exercises, and because of that, other exercises become underrated. And I think parallel bar dips are underrated. Now, they're not poorly rated. People will still consider them a great exercise, but people typically don't list them in the top, definitely not the top five, but maybe not even in the top 10 when people list exercise. They belong up there. I mean- Pull-ups are usually up there. Why not dips? Yeah. You know, it, it develops the upper body very well. And then I'll point to gymnasts. I've done this before, but mm. I'll do it again. Gymnasts, now, of course, there's crazy genetics. So we're looking at the top gymnasts. You're looking at people who are genetically predisposed to build muscle and have incredible strength, all that stuff. But if you look at the development of their upper bodies, they look like amateur bodybuilders. They don't do 
bench presses. Mm -hmm. They might do some push-ups, but they do a lot of dips, a lot of ring dips. And they have very developed chest and shoulders from do that you, exercise. Do you think the bench press got more popular because people had limitations in their in their mobility and range of motion in their shoulder and the stability? So they avoid started avoiding dips more and went more towards the bench press? No, I thought I thought the uh, evolution of the bench press came from sport. Wasn't it designed for like linemen and football first? No, did, did, football did, players didn't use strength training until way later. Well, I mean, a, a, like like fully train it, but I thought that that inclined bench press I thought was it, it like initially designed to help mm. linemen. No, come it was out. before, so this was before uh, football would be the first sport that used strength training. Yeah, yeah. of all the sports, are the first ones that embraced it. Pull that up, Doug. Give me. Give, let's see. Yeah, I don't let's, know the history the or, of that. origin of the of the uh, uh, barbell bench press. Yeah, uh, bodybuilders were the ones that popularized it because when bodybuilders hit the stage this really massive developed chest was like this big thing. And what a lot of these guys did is they bench press. Yeah, but Plus, who, I you mean, can but, load it really Yeah, but who heavy. introduced it? I mean, where? How, I, mean, I feel like... Uh, it didn't become a staple in, in, in yeah. bodybuilders' routines until the... Thirties and no, 40s I know, but you're saying what's made it popular. I mean, where did where did it even come from? Like, who decided I'm gonna we're gonna here it is right here. Eight George Hackensmith. The horizontal there you go. press. Yeah, that's a floor press. So, but what about the bench press? Because okay, so Hackensmith. I don't know if you guys know who Hackensmith was, but he uh -oh. was one of the craziest strongmen of. I mean, he was at the turn. Look at the picture of him. Click oh, on that yeah. picture of that guy. This is before. This is in the late 1800s or early 1900s. This is before supplements existed. Look at the look at the build on yeah. that moose right there. Yeah. I mean, and of course, he didn't lift weights full time. He had a job. It says he was the <laughs> He just yeah. looks strong. He doesn't look like a bodybuilder. It says he was the father of the bench press. Now, he did a floor press, but is it the bench bench press, like we know, where you have a bench with a rack on it? Yeah, I don't know. And about it that. might have been one of those things that was invented, but never really widely used until much later. Because I know it was widely used much later, but it may have been invented way before that, right? Interesting. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, maybe Doug can. We'll have to, can yeah, we'll have to come back yeah, to that. Who invented the. the Maybe the bench press you'd want to put on there. That's what he did. I okay. think, that, yeah, he did that, and that's what it came up. It came up with uh, with him first. Well, Doug, I'm going to send you another um, link because I want you to pull this up. I know Justin's going to find this yeah. freaking amazing. Well, because I mean, I've also made the the case uh, a long time ago that overhead press, in terms of like uh, usable functional strength, oh I God. think has way way more translation than well, the bench yeah. press. Oh yeah, I mean, you yeah. got to support the weight at the top and. Yeah, like, and that's one of the first things to go who, in terms of uh, strength. Is anything? I wish that. I did that more when I was younger. Totally. I wish I, I totally neglect. You know, it was a hard, hard, hard exercise. I remember, yeah. I remember like the first time doing it, being like, "Oh, this sucks." Bro, who would you rather <laughs> yeah. tangle with? A guy who could bench a lot, or a guy who could overhead press a lot? Yeah. Like, who's gonna, you know, throw you around a little bit? Right. Oh yeah. Right. Okay. Now look at this guy, Doug. Scroll to the last picture, or the second to last and the last picture. So look at this guy right here. I love. <laughs> I love that they lift like cannonballs. Okay. Yeah. I love looking up old feats of strength because they just blow my mind. So this guy uh, is a French weightlifter. Ernest uh, Cadine was his name. This is 1923 uh, when he's doing this. So the guy's 5'6", small dude. You can see he's, you know, he looks built, but today he, he wouldn't even, you know, get too many likes on social media compared to all these <laughs> physiques that we have, right? Yeah. Do you know how much he's pressing at the end there yeah, with that one much? dumbbell? What is it? 211 pounds. No way. That wow. one dumbbell at the very end, that's a 211 pound wow, above his head champ. with one hand lift at 5'6 in 1920. Yeah. This is definitely not, there was definitely no steroids. Nobody was using anabolic. What is, the there's a video I know of our friend Robert o Oberus pressing a, a big heavy dumbbell over yeah, his head. What did, what did he get? Oh, the to? Thomas Inch dumbbell. Maybe Doug, you can look that who, up. Who decided that they only have one strap? You know, oh, show one. I've always off. wondered that. It's like you're, I'm, I'm the strong man. It's like you only got the one side. Like you don't have the full one. You know side. what? What is that? What you is know what the, I think what, that I came no from? Idea. I'm going to speculate. I think I'm right though. The like a loincloth or something. You've been yes. a lot lately. Yeah. Though. It, it was. Um, they used to whenever they would do caricatures of cavemen. Uh huh. They would have them with this like one strap, like animal print type of thing. Yeah. So strong men wanted to present themselves as like these cavemen or whatever. Yeah, that's like my an animal skin coming yeah. across or something. Yeah, uh, yeah that's probably what it. What's came the from. Thomas Inch dumbbell? Very. That's this is like a feat of strength that not too many people can do. <laughs> we got to get one of those, man. You, we won't even why? go move it in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why? It's just cuts. We have to roll it across the. We floor. have like some. It's like the sword in the stone. We have some like three hundred pound sandbags out there that's never been moved. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, that's whose idea point. was that? <laughs> yeah. That wasn't my idea. That was, I think that was yours. I yeah. was on a kick for a while there, dude. I, you know, it's so funny too. Like, uh, talk about you, you know how quick you. Um, it's a very specific uh, uh, a, a type of strength to be able to pick up. 
a really heavy bag like that. Yeah, I, uh, I have a video on my rounded, Instagram. Rounded back strength. Yeah, I, I have a video on my uh, Instagram like that goes way back. Like, I don't know. This is like six years ago with that. And I was lifting it up on a- Oh, I remember. Yeah, and I was doing as many as I could in like, like in, in, a, in I think, uh, or how, as fast as I could get 10 or something like that. I can't remember what, what, what it was. But there was like a thing going around in our gym where people were like racing to see the time on that and to get it up on that. You know, and I, I was smoking 10 of those, you know, pretty well. And I have a, I have a hard time picking it once, right? <laughs> just getting it up. Well, like, you know what it develops? Dude, uh, just through pure novelty. Develops the shit out of your biceps yeah. because you have, I mean, how often do you, you have- You got to be careful not to tear them you if, you don't, if you don't train up to them yeah, really like, hard. Like your yeah. length, your biceps are lengthened. You have tremendous tension. Then your scapula and upper back is rounded yeah. uh -huh. and tensing. So yeah. all those muscles that almost never get that tension in that and rounded it takes, position. I mean, and you have to have some leg strength because you're pulling 200 pounds plus your body weight up oh, yeah. off the floor in a deep squatted position oh, right? yeah. or deadlift position. I love taking that and then and then tossing it overhead so you do some kind of like oh, a, God. A clean yeah. jerk. Yeah, well, I'm not doing that with over 200 Speaking pounds. Speaking of old it's time like strength, throw it over your shoulder. maybe Doug, you could look up uh, Paul Anderson. You guys know who Paul Anderson is? He's one of the greatest American, well, greatest Olympic weightlifters of all time, but he was an American and he was a farm boy. So I want to say he competed in the 1940s and the ways he would work out, what's great about Paul Anderson is he changed or he he's one of the pioneers of how weightlifters worked out back then, especially American weightlifters. This is remember the, the Soviet Union was, they had the Iron Curtain, so we heard nothing from them. Look at look at the pictures of this guy over here, by the way. Oh, look yeah. Look at the size of this. He's a, he's a beast. He <laughs> would like go, wagon axles. He would go in his barn and he would squat and, and he didn't, couldn't afford weights. So he'd fill up these 100-gallon drums full of concrete or he'd get big... Um, like uh, tractor wheels and stuff like that. And you would squat and drink milk. And you do this all it. day. Yeah, yeah. All day. Just got insanely strong. Doug, look up his uh, his like record lifts. Now he did one called a hip, I think it's called a hip hoist or hip lift, where he's kind of doing a bridge. So he's on his hands and on his feet, but he's like, you know, like a, uh, like he's doing a bridge on the ground. Mm -hmm. And then they put a strap around his waist and then load it. And I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken, 6,200 pounds. Oh my God. He was able to do this bridge. It's more than Brett Contreras, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe, Doug, you can find some of his, his top lifts. But, I mean, incredible feats what, of what's, what's the time or era? When, when is 1940s, this? 1940s, I want to say. This is the 40s? Yeah. Oh, 1955. Oh, there's squat, 1,200 pounds. Bench press, 628. There they are. Yeah. Clean and jerk, 440 pounds. A 1,200-pound squat, bro? Mm, yeah, I don't wow. know. I don't, I don't know how they, how they um, measured that. But, okay, uh, according to Anderson himself. Okay, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but <laughs> some of the, dude, I caught a huge fish. Yeah, 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 like yeah. some thing. some of them were obviously um, in in competition. So yeah. his four hundred and forty pound clean and press. Have you ever seen the clean and press from from back in those days? Hmm. So you know how technical they are now, right? Like they they pop it up and they get under the bar mm -hmm. and they snap and get it. So the bar didn't even move. They're just getting their body underneath it and pressing. Yeah. No, they're like muscling it up. Bro, his was yeah. a clean and a strict press. Yeah. yeah. 440. Yeah. And dress shoes, by the way. Yeah. He came out there and like, like the kind of shoes you wear at a wedding. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just pressed it up. Well, they liked it because it was flat. I know. know. Yeah. yeah it's pretty wild. crazy. Oh, right, it's so, a uh, cool um, study on strength training. Um, in fact, Rhonda, uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick posted about this. Strength training, I think we're, we're in that that phase right now where it's kind of getting the limelight, which is pretty cool. So they, there was a study that examined men in their seventies and resistance training. Obviously the study shows that it increased strength and size in the muscles, duh, but it also increased muscle re, uh, re innervation. Um, in other words, the connection between nerves and muscle. So why is this important? Because the loss of nerve supply to muscles is one of the main reasons why we lose muscle mass and function. Hmm. So this is a uh, a study showing that the connection to your muscles, right? Another part of the central nervous system, how much it develops through strength training. And these are not college-aged males. These were men in their 70s <coughs> who did this. Wow. Pretty awesome, right? Yeah. So, Great. okay, now let's speculate a little bit. Are, do you believe that there are uh, certain movements that would generate more of that than other movements? Oh, I would 100% think it would be the big gross motor movements. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would think more, the same thing too, because we're dealing with the this. CNS. But so you would think that an exercise that may show up on an East M, say a hack squat, which mm -hmm. would show the muscle more quad being activated, would be less than a potentially the squat. 
I think so. You know what we don't we we, we don't do is we look very closely at the target muscle, mm-hmm. so the acute direct effects of an exercise. So like, right. you know, leg press and squat on the quads. But what we don't look at is the, are the systemic effects mm-hmm. throughout the whole body. Anybody who's ever done barbell squats for a long time will tell you. In fact, there's an old saying in <clears throat> bodybuilding: um, add 100 pounds to your squat and you'll gain a half an inch on your biceps. Like it was like this this saying, something along those lines. You get this kind of whole body effect from these exercises that demand so much on your body. So although the direct effect on a specific muscle is probably the same, I think you get more of a systemic effect from some some of these exercises. And when we're talking about the nerves um, and how they connect to our muscles, I I would have to I would strongly think that it would be these big compound lifts that require stability and balance and. Yeah, the louder the signal, you would think, especially yeah. with those compound lifts, that it would affect you know that connectivity between nerves and yeah. muscles. I can't wait for us to put more and more of that research together yep. so that, so we see the whole come back full circle of everybody that it made just this. seems easier to put the e stem around the one muscle and isolate yep. that study and so that's like a lot more manageable but uh you know to get other studies like that to find out the systemic effect would be way we'll more have to start a new channel on youtube called mind pump was right <laughs> <laughs> again again <laughs> <laughs> Actually, That's you know it. what's funny? We're entering into the golden age of strength training um, studies. Studies are coming out left and right on strength training to the point now where uh, ma- you know mainstream medical associations are talking about its value and its benefit and how it, soon the conversation is going to be, not that you all forms of exercise don't have value. Ideally, you'd want to do lots of different forms of exercise for health and longevity. <laughs> But I think what they're going to start to say pretty soon is that that'll be the primary form of exercise they recommend to people as they age. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to happen. You should write a book about it. Absolutely. I did. Yeah, <laughs> you should let people know. I did. Yeah. Anyway, so- uh, Wait, well, anyway, I want to talk about how you're wrong. So oh, we don't yes. Ever, uh, we don't ever get to talk about- You've been wrong a lot lately. I want to point that out. What's and, a lot? And, and, well, and a lot lately. Okay. You know? So- Two out of two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all the, the last two things. The pump uh, behind yes, the scenes. Yes, at that movies, was wrong. Yes, right? and okay. big titties now. I think he's well, wrong. no, this whoa, is, we don't know whoa, yet. Whoa, all right, talk whoa, about it. Talk yeah. about what it. big titties? What so I got, so we obviously, we talked about the uh, teacher in Canada that put on the prosthetic boobs and we went around saying how ridiculous is it? And I said, I think it's a massive troll. Yeah. And you guys yeah. argued with me a little bit about that, whether it is or not. I said, no, I'm almost certain that it's so absurd. This guy has to be trolling. So far, we hadn't heard anything about that. Well, <clears throat> that episode went live. And of course, our audience is amazing. And there's always people that are searching to, to prove one of us right or wrong. And I got a bunch of DMs and people sending me this TikTok video of a guy who used to go to school there who knows obviously students that are still there mm-hmm. who wrote like an email or something to him saying like, this is a massive troll. This guy is the furthest thing from woke culture. In fact, he's been anti woke culture and this, the whole staff there doesn't like him because mm. he's this guy who is the opposite of that. In fact, he's been, he's been caught saying sexist comments and stuff like that and making jokes in his, in his classroom and stuff like that. And so this was his way of trolling the faculty because he knew- Like here, try and fire me. That's right. He knew they could, and they still can't. Like so. I, and the, the now, rumor now, is that they can't fire and they can't do anything about it. And so they're trying to get him to get transferred into another Providence. Mm. So that's the and Now, and the more I thought- what Providence. I did, Pro, oh, what, Province. Province. Thank yeah. you, Doug, for correcting me and not yeah. waiting until the show's over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the audience Almost doesn't know. Doug lets me say stupid shit all the time and he knows I was and wrong. Then afterwards. Then, yeah, then afterwards he tells me, why the fuck are you not correct me when I yeah. say that? <laughs> You're batting 100 your for saying yeah. stupid shit. Yes, there's the other one. And that one I'm ashamed of. I'm like the- <laughs> Batting 100. Oh, yeah. batting 100. I did, it, I did it again after he had corrected me and I was out here with Katrina and I said batting 100. Doug says 1,000. Like, I don't want I don't to detract why. us, but I'll have to bring up my my star wars information again at some point. i'm getting <laughs> yeah, fucking roasted for i knew oh, we'll get there don't yeah, worry i knew you were gonna get heated up but we're the all thing, failing today by i know it's sorry it's a massive sorry um, i won i feel like i won but i didn't i did not <laughs> i did not think about uh like okay and, and, and let me ask you guys so the the, the thing that kind of dawned on me after the this person sent this to me and i was just like of course of course i should have known that but when i think about high school for me and i think uh like and I, and I know I think they they've done this. I know in colleges it is obviously it's, I think it's like ninety percent liberal, ten percent conservative. Like yeah. for, for professors, and when I think of high school, if uh, I, I thought back to all my teachers, what would they leaned left or right or whatever? 
if there were any right leaning teachers, they were wood shop. shop and wood shop, <laughs> yeah. metal shop. Yeah, yeah. for sure, <laughs> for sure. That and I'm like, of course, you know, what I'm saying yeah. this. This is a wood shop teacher. The likelihood that he's like a super woke left dude. Well, so I, I doubt so it. We looked at the. We I watched what you sent. It's still speculation. So unfortunately, we don't have evidence. Right. By the way, what's funny to me is you make fun of Justin and I for being conspiracy theorists, mm -hmm. but you are too, just differently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're talking about, he's, we'll, he's like the, the cultural, social he, Everything, conspiracist. anything that has to do with celebrities yeah, yeah. or media is exactly. a conspiracy. Like Will Smith planned it with, what's his name? Yeah, Chris Rock. Which, okay, so I'll give you, uh, that. I'll give, I'll give you that. I, I do. So I, who, but here's the deal. Yeah, uh, we're worried about the government. Yeah, yeah. There's, so there's, yeah, real conspiracy. So this, so. <laughs> <laughs> not those fake ones. Not those fake yeah. ones. So this is um, speculation. Now, it's here's what I think is funny about the whole thing. We live in a time now where we don't know <laughs> if that happened 15 years ago. It'd be like, Oh my God, it's a funny joke. Yeah. It would be like obvious, but now it's like, I have, I don't know. Like yeah. you're making, like it, it sounds logical that he totally could be doing that because, yeah. you know, given that circumstance and that situation, it's like, you'd, Let's just say you're you're you know a teacher in, in that environment. And you're you're frustrated with with everything that uh, you know you're allowed to say, what you're not allowed to say. And then you're just like, well, maybe I'll just lean all in what they think. You know, and then I, they can't I should fire be. Me. Yeah, and then they can't fire me. So now here's why I think it it might not be a troll job because I think that the school would do due due diligence in the sense that if he went from nothing to that all of a sudden. Then maybe they would be like, "You're well. We know you're." But they have their them. hands tied, though. But you but still same time, you, have your, you still have your hands tied. Maybe. If I wake up tomorrow and say, they can't I, tell him that's not his identity. And I'm a teacher there, and I say I identify as a woman. Like you can't be like, oh, because it wasn't dated back to well, four so, years ago. This doesn't fly. Well, no, no. But here's what I so I read this too, and again, I, this none of this is confirmed, but I did read that they had a history that this person was going through. Tran transitioning period. Now, I haven't seen or read any of that. You said that, but I didn't see nothing. Okay, of that. I'll find something because yeah, I, yeah. I did read about that. So, in other words, this was part of it. So, like, first he came to school in a wig, and then it, it was like mm -hmm. a process. It wasn't just well, I'm, one and, big, like, well, maybe that here was, I am. Maybe that was his process, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, look, here's the way I, I look mean, if at it, it happened over two or three years, and then I believe you, but if it happened over the course of this year, well, here's the way shows I, up in a wig first, and he's putting makeup yeah. on, then well, he does a process. I mean, I mean, I'll be the ultimate troll, right? I, here's the way I look at it. I don't think it matters. I think it's highlighting the absurdity yeah. of how far we go to try to appear to be inclusive for whatever to the point where we let people get away with shit that you would never. Well, you guys remember the uh, story of the, the guy that was down in LA that went in to get a Brazilian wax. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Dude. Did you hear about that? No. Yeah. So he identifies it's like, as a woman okay. went down to get wax and we're like, uh, we don't wax. We don't testicles. We don't wax. Yeah. We don't wax that sued them. Now they lost. I'm, I'm a woman, yeah. so you you the, need to provide the service. But the estheticians were like, "I'm not comfortable waxing balls." Yeah, <laughs> I don't wax exactly. Balls. Like that's before. not on our chart. You don't right? know like, now that was real. Yeah, and they sued the esthetician the, the the place, but they lost. Thankfully, yeah, they did lose that. Okay. But that was a real deal. That's funny. Could you imagine? But I mean, I just see that. Like, this is like being pressed, you know, like how far, like wh what are the lines? Like at this point, what are the lines? You know what's going to happen is people are just going to be smart about how they present something. So someone's going to come in uh, and be like, I'd like to get waxed. And I'll be like, you know, I have no training in waxing female testicles. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So now what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my training is only on female vagina. The thing that's stupid female. is that you're going to have, that's that's probably how that's going to get solved. I know. Is you have to jump through some stupid hoop. Like, this is the verbiage we have to use now to be inclusive, is make sure that you say, even though we we don't do that service, but when they do come in, you need to say it this way. Yep. <laughs> it's so dumb. I don't know. It's, it's all, <laughs> so it's all insane. Dude, so all right, so speaking of dumb, Justin... <laughs> good trend. You good were, transition. You were our go-to. I don't like where this is going. You were our go-to Star Wars guru. <laughs> oh man! And you fucked up, dude. I had a brain fart, and then you kept saying Andor, and like I was like, "What's Princess Leia's home planet?" Like I just couldn't. Like it didn't process. You dude, I was so not. mad at myself. Did your fans get so irritated? No, it was Alderaan, dude. It, it, and so here's the thing: everybody was hammering me about uh, Endor. I'm like, did we even bring up Endor in that? I don't think so. I don't. Think I so. know that's where the Ewoks. I know yeah. that. Duh. Okay. Everybody knows like, that. Yeah, everybody knows that. Oh, so Endor is where the where the Ewoks are. Yeah. No, Andor's the name of the character in the show that was on Rogue oh. One. 
okay. Endor. Endor is where you know the Ewoks were in Return of the Jedi. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. So that's the, the planet. Be- the best characters in all Star Wars. Yeah. Well. So <laughs> I mean, I blame Star Wars now for like you know making them too close in in names. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. So anyway. what are people saying to you? Like they're all disappointed. <laughs> like, I can't believe you didn't know. Like the the, the You're that not real Endor fan. is where. Yeah. So like I'm just getting <laughs> all this like nonsense. But are uh, Star Wars fans? I guess they are. Right. They're like super. Like the super fans are really crazy about details, dude. They, I mean, there's literally like Wikipedia, like like Wikipedia. So like, that's, a, that's a thing. It's a thing. Wiki, yeah, Wiki. Like, look it up. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I mean, you have like a re- legit website. Yeah, it's like all the definition. It's like hey, basically Doug, defines put, every single character, every single place. Like hey, that's the thing. Bro, that's, if I ever walk up and crazy. I see you surfing through that on your phone, I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> hold in the on dick. a second. Hold on a second. Just just know that that's coming. Doug, just click on, on click on see images. me at a convention. Like <laughs> just turn. Off, hey, just, turn off. Like, I will you, have to go through that reading, just bro? to stay Wookie relevant. Media. Hey, Doug, do me a favor. <laughs> click Wookie. T- turn off safe search and click on images. Let's just see what pops up. Because I have a feeling there's some weird Star Wars shit up there with Wookiees. Yeah. The fact that you know that. Well, I'm sure there is. It's disturbing I, to Not me. that I know that. Did I'm you guys, betting on The it. fact there, that you know that is dude, disturbing yeah. to me. There's yeah. some, there's some like. Uh, I'm nervous to do this. I didn't even know that was a thing. What do you turn off? What did you tell them to turn off? Safe search. Yeah. What That's is a safe search? So Google, bro, if you click on images, dirty, you're such a dirty old no, man. No, I'm not, bro. Everybody <laughs> knows this. This is what he knows. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> knows this. Nobody in here knew that. Yes, they I do. Didn't, no, I didn't. Know that. Don't I didn't, lie, Doug. I didn't know I that didn't either. Do. I didn't know this. <laughs> Your safe search already off. What are you talking about? Uh, when you go on, <laughs> click on images. You there, you'll have you. First off, your Google, and I don't use Google anymore because I track everything. Fuck you guys. But if you did. You can That's make not even it, the reason why you don't use Google. You, you can make a search. Yeah, but you know the data gets transferred over to Safari from like DuckDuckGo. I, I realize that too. No, it doesn't. Yeah. What? Yes. Son of a bitch. Well, I well, know because I was trying to like look right, at no, clear go, history. Go, go, I'm in my I'm in, I'm in my Google search right now. I want to know what you're talking about. I, so I didn't even click on anything. Click on okay. a word. Yeah. I'm on Wookie now, but I don't know how to turn off safe or turn on. Oh, I can't off. see your screen, oh, so I can't point you in the right direction. Andrew's gonna help you. Yeah. Okay, okay, so Andrew okay, knows. where it says image. T- okay, I put something up. Now what? No, no, no. Uh, here, let me see your phone. Okay, can we just can you oh. can't you can't walk me through it? Uh, I I don't remember, but you, there, you definitely can turn off. Uh, like you can make the searches moderate, safe, or off. In other words, it'll pull up anything that comes up. I did not even uh, know that yeah. was a thing. Yeah, did oh, yeah. you know that? No, I didn't. I, all Bro, I know, you were the only creepy fuck that knew that. <laughs> no, I'm not, here. dude. Only one. Everybody knows that. There, I didn't know listen, that. Listen, three of us. Don't there's know five it. people in this room. Everybody. Two of you knew. But, Andrew, oh, Andrew, Andrew knew. Yeah. Andrew knew. Who you? No. I didn't know. I no, oh, look at bro, oh, man. bro. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Wow, knows. look at that, huh? Is that is that, is that all the Wookie pictures? <clears throat> no, yeah. I wanted to see the. I wanted to see the oh, website. The like, what do you mean? Like, what what do you think we're gonna find? Uh, I just want to. Oh, nothing. Just oh, okay. you, just when you do that, <laughs> would you put up? Hey, he's so like, <laughs> fuck. This didn't go the. <laughs> this didn't go the direction I wanted it to go. <laughs> yeah, like. Because here's a th- okay, so they have like a burlesque show. Uh, yeah, with, they did. Do you see that? Like, I heard about it. Yeah, so it's it's got all this like scantily clad girls dressed up as stormtroopers, and uh, you know they do reenactments of like some of the movies. Uh, so I'm definitely like trying to plan it. Okay, so well, so <laughs> since since we went here because of yeah. Sal, is there a, is there like a crazy like you know Star Wars sexual like a fetish thing? Yeah, yeah, sure. What do you think? Yeah, name I, something there isn't. Yeah, oh, I don't know. Is that, I don't know Is the name really of the like character, but it's like the one that's in Jabba the Hutt. These are definitely things I don't search. Bro, so. there's people. It's not about searching. It's the internet. People mm. have sex with cars. Did you know that? There's people that no, literally. I <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I definitely know you're the one I'm going to come to. Though. I yeah, that was on that show Taboo. I yes. saw that. Yes. Yeah. There was this guy. Oh, you know, I saw God Sod posted about that. It made me laugh. I saw him. He posted that's that. That's old. Yeah, dude. Yeah. dude, that show Taboo, was that on HBO? But it was like back in the day, they had all these like really like weird kinks that people had. So strange. Yeah. It's funny. I was it was uh, fascinating to me, so, though. So, you know what's strange to me? What? I saw you know, I've seen Doug using the Organifi Glow lately. Which well, is just uh, weird, hold on a second. Which is weird to me. Look at his face right now. I know. Have does, you guys noticed? Just, know. Just, look how illuminated. Beaming. We had to change it's the lighting beaming. in the studio. To I felt like he was doing. He was in the back doing it by himself. I felt like he's like ashamed that he's got a what? pink bottle. I am a little what bit ashamed. You, 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 you know what? My my vanity exceeds my <laughs> sense of shame. <laughs> hey, I have a theory, Adam. Dude. So I looked at old pictures. I mean, he does look the best. Well, I looked at old pictures. Yeah. Okay. 
And so when we started Mind Pump, you and I oh God. don't look seven years younger. We look yeah. 20 years younger. <laughs> Doug's been using these Doug, interventions without us knowing. Doug looked older back then, looks younger now. I think he's sucking the youth out of us. I think he's yeah. pulling oh, our yeah. youthful energy out. I believe that. In, that in or way. he's really good about using all these little products and he doesn't tell everybody I that he's doing everything. it. I use everything. Come huh? on. So, uh, hey, how did you hear about Glow? You told me you got a bunch of reviews, right? Well, no, you guys brought it up on the show, and you said that some people were using it and were getting great results from it. Okay. I said, well, well <laughs> I better do it too, yeah. <laughs> you know, even though I was a little bit ashamed. Hey, but. speaking of our sponsors, I did think of a downside to one of our sponsors, Magic Spoon. We had that guy call well, this in. This can be a great commercial. Yeah, I know. We had that. No. <laughs> what do you mean? Let's, let's, let's hear we had this. that guy call in, and he's like, remember that caller? And he's like, hey, guys, whatever. Oh, I want you guys to know I saw a Magic Spoon and bought oh, it yeah, for, yeah. for the first time, and I ate the whole box already. Yeah. Like, Come on, bro. You're using it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to work. Yeah, it's delicious, but also, yeah, you got to kind of manage dangerous. yourself. It, it is dangerous because I've actually, you, I've done the whole total calories on the box, and it's not like crazy. I mean, you could, you'll do way more damage having a treat, eating, eating like a ice cream, pint of ice cream. Have you more. eaten a whole box at once? Oh yeah, dude. So, one okay. sitting? I've done it too. Yeah, yeah, I have too. A whole box. Let whole me box. ask you, Adam. Yeah. Do you have different? You have different size bowls specifically for that, right? Because I, I don't have even, like a big one. I'm like, I don't give a fuck bowl. You know. <laughs> I have like the medium bowl and I have the like the one I'm like trying to like manage myself. I don't I don't ever eat out of a sissy bowl, dude. Mm. <laughs> sissy bowl. <Right. laughs> all I use I use table like serving punch bowls bowl. for all <laughs> all food, bro. Do you really? Yes. Wow. I'm double I'm double meat and double serving in almost any you try and fit a cup and a half of rice and twelve ounces of a meat in a in a fucking sissy bowl. Yeah. You cannot <laughs> Can't fit that in there. That's a that's a that's a that's a at most one cup rice and six ounce serving. That's what Katrina eats out of. I don't eat out of that. I eat out of a man bowl. It's like this. Yeah, bro. Obesity bowl. Sometimes I use a little kid bowl just to. I'm all about. I do. I eat all. I keep myself like contained. You know. Yeah. No. That was. uh, Bro, you know, you just made me think of one of the one of the first times I tried to track calories because I'm like, you know what? I know I'm trying to eat more to gain because I was always trying to gain. I'm like, let me start tracking calories. I don't know how I came up with this 5,000, 500 calorie diet, but breakfast was, <laughs> it was a, it was a 10 egg scramble, two slices of toast. And then I used to eat a punch bowl of Cheerios and it was almost an entire box. Of, and I would do this for breakfast. I just remember that. How do you guys think I felt going wow. to school after eating that, by the way? Oh, it was you not good, bro. <laughs> Captain noises over yes, there. Dude. Yeah. Would you say that was like the worst breakfast that you ever, like- Just like- too much, dude. I was like, my mom My mom would drive me to school and I was in the, because I think I was like a freshman and I'm in the back, I'm in the car and I'm like fighting, you know, trying not to throw up the whole time. Oh, wow. We didn't last it to like third period. And then I was like, time for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had like seven sandwiches in my bag. Dude. How not Ooh. to do a bulk. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't yeah, do it that way. We would do anything to get gains yeah. back. Hey, then. did you guys see some of these? Uh, have you guys seen of these posts on people who post a lot on social media? There's been a couple studies have come out. Posts on, on people that post a lot on social no, media? No, no, no. There's, there's studies about people like, who post a, uh, a lot on social media, and then there's study on people who follow lots of celebrities on mm. social media. What do you guys think they found? So people who post a lot on social media, who like to post they're a lot of pictures of, their, of themselves working Insecure. out, fitness, that kind of stuff. Yeah, what I mean, there all those things are going to Higher be rate of mental disorder. Sure. So there's a higher rate of... Sure. Why do you guys think that is? <laughs> you know, I have some theories. Well, I mean, one, you're constantly comparing yourself to everybody. If you're yeah. on there posting every single day, you're you, and you're also obsessed with... And I mean, even... My, I, like, this is like something that you uh, almost like instinctually do. You can't help but post something and then go back and look like, oh, did it get yeah. more likes than usual yeah. or less likes than usual? Yeah. So I, I could see how somebody could obsess over that. Yeah, right? you're too worried about how it's being received. Yes. Uh, you know, like if people like me, like oh, like the, the whole time you're just, your mind is completely somewhere else and, and you're never really like present anymore. Like you're, you're scatterbrained. The part that I think is really interesting to me is, and is I 100% believe I'm the, like the, uh, the person who's, I give a shit what people think about me. I think, I think I would hope that you guys would agree that that's the type of person that I am as far as my, but even I find I, that I could get into that, right? I could go like, it oh, sucks you in. Yeah, it is. So if it has that kind of a pull on a person like me, I can't imagine somebody who is weak in that area. Well, so here is where so, you're not confident, where you don't, where you do really agreed, give a shit about what right. everybody thinks about. I mean, it's just a trap. Agreed. I was thinking um, about this a lot when I read this particular study. Cause I thought, <laughs> well, that's obvious. And I thought, wait a minute, is it the cause or the effect? In other words, are people with more mental issues more likely to post and want validation mm -hmm. through social media, or does the posting and social media validation or requiring re 
cause more mental issues. That's what I think. I think it's both. Oh, I think I, it's there's both. a feedback I wonder, loop. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't disagree yeah. with that. I think it's both. I don't think it's either or. I think people who have a tendency towards that post more, and then the more they post, the more it feeds into mm. that insecurity, that wanting validation, that comparison, that mm -hmm. I'm not good enough. And then that makes you post even more. And you go down this kind of death spiral. Of you know, it's media. it's it's moving in the other direction though, uh, somewhat, right? Like, okay, you always like the trend is like, you know, what are the what are the young popular kids doing? And it's 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 becoming less pop. And maybe Andrew, because young Andrew's younger and also has younger kids. If, if you can correct me if I if I'm wrong here, but it seems that now, like like really popular younger kids, it's not cool to like post every day. Like you mm. don't put on your wall. You don't do that. You can mm. do stories and do shit like that, but you're not. How do you know this, by the way? I just I pay attention. I follow a lot you more pay, people than you. I follow a lot of high pay school attention kids. To young, I was going to say, how do you know this? <laughs> what are all the high school kids oh, doing? No. Hey, Adam, hey, Adam yeah. rolls up on a high school. Yeah. Hey, 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 come here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's cool right now? Uh, yeah. Can you tell me what's cool? What do you guys think about my no, no. that, that, I, that? You know, I don't know how I do it. I just know. You know I just, I'm, actually, I'm asking. I'm asking Andrew, am I right or am I right? Am I right? Um, I'm definitely out of the scene. Oh, wow. See. I'm 26, but... Judging based off. Well, actually, let's start with this. Were you cool in high school? Yeah. Okay, so you're 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 credible. You're a credible source here. <laughs> so I can't ask Sal these questions. It was now what? Almost ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, I'm 26 now. Bro, he's yeah. 10 years out. Yeah, but it, he's still got a better pulse than any of us in here. Yeah. I, I mean, so you know, we can just look it up. By the way, we have we have the ability to look up anything we want. <laughs> we just do that. Yeah, but how would you? Our look that kids. Up? Okay. Our kids posting. Are, are, is the younger generation posting more or less on social media? Ugh, see, the reason why I don't think that's a fair because that, those aren't the, the cool kids represent a very smaller percentage, and they start the trends, and then that's mm. what everybody follows. Yeah, later you're on. definitely the authority on cool kids. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you if you if you Google something like that, you're going to get the the, the total. Well, yeah, all the, we can do is speculate, right? Like, I. In, in terms of like the platform, we got fucking kids jumping out there. Can someone call call a kid in here right now? To, uh, we'll get Kyle or Dylan TikTok. or TikTok. We do hire kids because they, they're cheaper. No, no, that's not, you made it sound like we got a bunch of children out no, there. No, that's not why. If we, hey, if we want this company to last longer than 10 to 15 years, we better have some young Bro, people. Our youngest there. employees in their mid, in what, mid, no, I guess my son would be the youngest, but he's, he's not very What are you talking right about? Now. Kyle and Dylan are younger than that. No, then younger than my son. No, not younger than your no, son. No. What are they, in their early 20s? Yeah, they're super young. What are they, what's, what's the ages? Yeah, 21, 21 is the yeah. Oldest, yeah. That's I mean, that's fresh out of high school, dude. They know. Somewhat. Are you trying to find some, Doug? Well, I don't know if this is exactly the answer you're looking for, but users between 18 and 25 years old are the only age group to see a decrease in social media use since 2019. <laughs> wow. Oh. We found something that you're an authority. What? That's, no, you're, like, <laughs> you're like three in a row wrong, and I'm right. I didn't say you were wrong. Fucking, give me the tally up here, Andrew. <laughs> give me the tallies. <laughs> Hold on. This, guy, this Hold guy's on. been this guy's been touting he's right all the time for fucking years. <laughs> we don't know We're the boob thing is true yet or not. It's gonna be true. Okay. I mean, yeah. even maybe you feel, even you feel confident. I'm probably. I right feel on that like now. I I feel like it could be, but I'm not gonna go 100. percent Now, mm. if it was orchestrated by the government, I would say it's definitely <laughs> true. for sure. Yeah, it could be an Illuminati. No, I'm thing. listening. He's using his boobs. To yes. Okay. So <laughs> my my point of bringing that up, I know we kind of went off on a, a tangent and, and teasing each other about all this stuff, but I really do think that. Uh, the the pendulum has swung really far that way. I think uh, younger kids coming up are actually aware of some of these stats. Yeah, mm. you know, I think I think they're becoming aware of this stuff, and it's and it is just becoming less cool. More and more people are realizing, like, oh, there's so much fake social shit out there, or everybody's it's everyone, just not as everyone, novel. What's, it, what's the what's the terms? Uh, um, basic and uh, what's the term? Andrew, come on, help me out here Based. for like no 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 when, like when someone's like trying hard. Oh, what what is that? Oh, extra. 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 Look at Doug. Hey, Look you know I, know, I know things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and that was, wow. to me, that was the, the beginning of that was like that, the younger generation calling out people that are just extra like oh my god so extra you're you, you're you're trying to look cool you're trying now to you know this. what the younger generation uses a lot of just mm. off of my experience with my i would say my daughter how she's embarrassing is this grade. conversation right now oh, so yeah. this, this, we're gonna be we're if gonna i start talking about this. my drip and all that like i'm out dude. wow like, i'm out <laughs> that's out nobody says it no anymore. yeah they, they they say that <laughs> still that's the kids are saying that really dude. yes okay well, Ooh, my drip, dude. My, my, so my, my, you know, my daughter <coughs> and her friends do a lot of, they don't do a ton of social media. They do a lot of YouTube. So I think YouTube has now become their primary source. They do of a lot of it or they watch it? They watch it a lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They no, watch I, it. no I, I agree. And I don't, okay. So I'm very careful about making fun of the younger generation about stuff like that. We did that. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, you, I don't know. Well, and we I, sound like a bunch of boomers when we fucking say shit. When we make did fun we, of them, but did we? Did yes, we, we did. Hold on, lingo and and Here's slang has been around. Yeah, but for, did no, no. Video Doug, games. Doug could, I could get Doug to drop some slang that we're not familiar with. Uh, What's good slang, Doug? From Groovy? Yeah, get, no. Give me some. Give me something from your era that was like something you used for a long time that we don't. I mean, use. a word that was popular is sweet. Mm. Sweet. Everything was sweet. That sweet. even made it into. Like, we're not that you far. You bet off your that. sweet ass. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and another one. Oh, cherry. Cherry was another one. Oh, oh that's cherry. Oh man, oh, yeah, these are kind of creepy. That's you don't like, remember? Yeah, sweet, sweet cherry. Uh, yeah, yeah oh, I sweet do. cherry. Yeah. You said sweet. Yeah, I remember saying sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember saying sweet like in sixth, seventh grade. So yeah. that was probably high school for you or whatever. That right? Interesting. We were that that far. Uh, Interesting. Well, I don't know. You yeah. may. You might be right. More. More. Jesus Christ, Doug. You're that old. Yeah. Wow. Well, you, what are you? You could 40? have babysat me. You then. guys don't remember? He went to high school in Mesopotamia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it cost two shekels. Right. Yeah. Those, uh, yeah those, so I, I mean, had to take those big, you know, stone tablets everywhere. It was horrible. I mean, it's it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you had a slingshot. You threw. You hit. A, I mean, what it, what it, what is that? What is that phenomenon that that causes that? Right? Would you? My my theory around that is that when you're young, you don't want to be saying the same things that your dad and mom of are course. saying. And so you come up, you reinvent new yeah. slang that you're only hip to, and your friends are hip to. So they're intent. They intentionally try and keep you. The most hilarious one for that was like when you saw um, when people were starting to use jiggy with it. Oh. Remember that? That was the most yeah. cringe thing I've ever seen in my yeah. life. Dude. Well, that was all because of the Will Smith yeah. song that came yeah. out, right? That was that. that you, came, well, I mean, you just wait till like, your kid. Well, that's how culture. That? That's how culture works, though, right? So you have someone who is extremely famous at that time, who who says something or does something first, and then and because they have millions of people paying attention to them, that's how that. Well, you that just gets wait. First off. off, the '90s is in style now, which means we're officially old, right? When that shit comes mm -hmm. back around, right? Yeah. But you just wait till oh. your you just wait till your kids in junior high. You it's know what's funny? funny I'll drop my daughter off, and she'll be like, "What? We'll be listening to music together." And <laughs> before she gets out of the car, she turns off the music. She don't want yeah that making no noise or the making style, any dude. Like so, <laughs> I just took my kids to go get cuts uh, from Vicky. And you know, Ethan's kind of going off and thinking on his own terms, like I want, I want this haircut, and he's like showing me and Courtney all the haircuts he wants, and it's like Backstreet Boy haircuts. Oh, no. dude. It's like you know, part in the middle, and it's like all these, you know, like every sitcom you saw like back in the day in the nineties, like had, they all have this like mm -hmm. specific kind of hair. Well, I, I sent you guys a picture of my daughter's shoes yesterday, Jordans. Old the old school Jordans. Well, yeah, that's oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's. I mean, those those that's are. That's never been out of style. Yeah, really. those have gotten more popular. In fact, uh, old. I bet you you could look this up. I bet you more Jordan ones are sold today than, than they, they were originally. Yeah, than, I, I than they see. were originally for the first ten years. I even. would agree. That's how how popular the Jordan ones are today in comparison yeah. to what they were. Even when they nineties first blew music up. is big right now. My kids are listening to everything from the nineties. Whenever we're, cause at night we, you know, we eat dinner together. Uh, finally, I'm like, nineties were cool, bro. I'm, like, all, I'm all for that. We do dishes that's my, that's my, and my, they my put shit. on Nirvana. They put on Metallica. My kids are putting Metallica on. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I'm so proud. Oh, Metallica smashing pumpkins. Like we're all listening Thank to Thank you 90s for bringing music. up Metallica. What happened? I know Adam already knows this. So don't chime in. I won't. Right I won't say anything. Okay. Yeah. Like, so, you know, the load album. Yeah. Right? Do you remember the cover of it, Doug? Can you pull it up? The, I don't. The load, you don't remember the lo Metallica the it load like? cover? So it's got I'll like know it if flames, I see it, sure. right? Yeah. So it has like these flames, and it's it's. Okay. Let, him, let him see it. Let him see okay, it. it's somewhat like you know. I I I I I don't know. I mean, artistically uh, put on there, if you will. Okay. So there's a story behind this, I guess. So and uh, oh, there, there you go. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. open so that up. This Doug. looks like this looks like flames, you know, uh, and. It, it's got a cool kind of vibe to it. But yeah. so the artist that did this, right? Um, I guess, you know, like what that consists of. So that's actually like the artist's jizz. What? And his blood. Yeah. Whoa. That he mixed so you in didn't there. Know that. Why would he mix that? Right? Yeah, that. It's so James what Hetfield to him? was like, he found this out later. Like Lars, like love. He's like, oh, like was all about it. And like they were doing the reload album. And, and James Hetfield was like, no, he's not doing that for this album. <laughs> It's like adamant that they used a different uh, artist or, or style, uh, but I didn't know that. Like that's I, I always looked at hell? that. Like oh, these are what interesting, the cool flames did he have for that. I was like, Ugh. that's terrible. Yeah. yeah, I was actually having a conversation with my kids about metal because we were listening to music, mm -hmm. and I was showing them the different levels of metal. <laughs> so we'd start with like Metallica, but not all Metallica. We started with like 
you know, like uh, um, Unforgiven, Sandman, okay. Unforgiven. Yeah. And then I got to, uh, you know, Masters of Pup, you know, uh, Puppets. And then we got to, and then we went with Sepultura. And, yeah. you know, so there were levels where my kids are like, I like this. I don't know about this. And then my kids are like laughing. They're like, I don't understand this, Dad. <laughs> like, go lift weights, you'll get it. You'll understand when you. I'm with them though. I, I like, I oh. love Metallica. I'm, I'm. You guys are more Pantera. Although I do have Pantera right, in there, Pantera. and I will occasionally listen to it. You know what's an album that <clears throat> I just so again because I was having this conversation with my kids. Oh. You know, I, and I, I always forget that this group is one of the best groups to work out to. Godsmack. Oh, Godsmack. Did is you hear so me? I, did you? I've been on Godsmack kick for a minute. Oh. oh yeah, I've been listening to him again. Love That's em. funny. They're, yeah, the they're, they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It's I too just, weak for Justin. I mean, I just found this band. Their name's Botch, and it's they have one song, and it literally blew my hair off, dude. Mm. It's like it's so heavy, dude. Speaking of it's hair, way too heavy, dude. Yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, you you can so listen. Good, dude. Uh, the thing that blows my like, and we all like that. We all like this music, and I definitely you know getting into a heavy deadlift. You, I all throw Pantera and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. I fucking love Rage. I, I mean, I, yeah. I love that music. But I have to be in the right mood for that music. Yeah, Justin just... could be driving <laughs> to work for eyes barely opening and fucking <sighs> yeah, Pantera. Yeah, I just I can't well, do I that. I did this morning. Yeah. I can't do that, dude. We're, oh. We go to the airport sometimes at six o'clock in the morning, all of us, and, and he's driving, and we gotta listen to some. Sh I'm like, bro, I'm just not ready for this. Yeah. Stuff. You gotta <laughs> e at least ease me rock wise. Like at least give me Unforgiven, yeah, yeah. Inner Sandman, and then take me there. But like, I can't just come out the gates with that. No, he yeah. meditates. No, I, like exactly. That. Yeah, it's, it's, it is. It's, it but, calms me down. <laughs> Speaking of hair, by the way, I got to tell you guys something very interesting. So, uh, as Adam has pointed out many times off air, yes, my hair is starting to thin. This is <laughs> what happens as you get older. Bro, I've been hella nice not to get you, bro. I've uh, been so nice. You're waiting. Uh, you're waiting until it's obvious. I, that's I, like, and I'm waiting. No, I've been waiting for you to like to sting me really bad yeah, one time because that's like a that's like a. <laughs> well, hey, look, I'm 43. This has been a slow, long process over the last seven years. I noticed, but you know, I do my it's things. karma, dude. I use my herbs. Karma's and, jumping. Bro, out, I told you I knew this was gonna happen. But anyway. I, so you know what I did? I bought, because I'm like, let me try uh, minoxidil. So this has been over the counter. It was originally, I don't know if you guys, you guys know what minoxidil was originally researched for? No. When they found out the side effect was hair growth? No. To lower blood pressure. So it was a no. blood pressure medication. One of the side effects was hair regrowth. So of course they marketed as hair for, for that, right? Because you got way more market viability. Well, anyway, I used it like two or three times. So I'm like, let's just see what happens. You got to use it for like months to notice anything. Yeah. And I started feeling like shit. I was getting dizzy and I felt weird and I didn't connect the two. And I was telling my wife, I'm like, man, I feel horrible. I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel like something's wrong. And you guys know me when I start to feel sick, I think like I'm going to die. So I'm like, you know, honey, make sure you have everything in order or whatever. <laughs> call, but and then I'm like, priest. I wonder if it's that. And I looked it up. Sure enough, one of the, the side effects, potential side effects of that is you could absorb too much through the scalp and it can cause like dizziness and lightheadedness and all that stuff. Oh, so wow. I had to toss it out. You know, you just brought something up that maybe really. I wanted to ask you guys and uh, maybe Doug could look it up if you guys don't know. The origin of vegetable oil. Do you know it? Mm -mm. I don't know if this is true. Do you, do you know what it is at all? you have any guesses? The origin? Yeah, like, you... like what was it made for originally? Machinery? Yeah, lubricant yeah. For, a, for like engines. Yeah. If that's true, I don't know if that's true. That Look, is true. Fact check me, Doug. Yeah, that I mean, is true. Oh. But And then they figured out how to make it not taste so <laughs> shitty through processing, and then they could use it uh, in food for food. Isn't that kind of crazy? I know. Well, don't they have some petroleum-based like sweetener that they were able to kind of reduce down all the way and break down to where they could, it was like an artificial God, sweetener. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I know petroleum is based for so much shit. Dude, they just, I mean, at that point, it's just chemistry. It's just but isn't that kind of weird though? We made something like to lubricate like engines in cars. Yeah. It, it, you and know what I'm Put it on salad dressing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> well, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think aspartame was originally designed like, to be to like kill rat poison or something like that no something, way i think so no way i think so i might be making shit up right now maybe yeah but yeah hey, did you oil. fact check me yet doug i'm trying to find this and i'm not uh about it being used for industrial uses what do so, you get what are you getting original as a, doug just uh, look up vegetable was vegetable vegetable oil was originally used to lubricate engines that's all mm -hmm. Take, turn safe search off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember where I read it, uh, but you just reminded me when you started talking yeah. about that. And then what they well, do is they, they figured out how to make it so that it wasn't, so it had a neutral flavor mm -hmm. and they were able to sell it because you know why? Isn't that a biodiesel a fuel? Like they, they'll use vegetable oil. Yeah, but that's different than lubricant. Different. Yeah. yeah. But what, what they did was is because like um, when you take grapes and you make wine, the grape seeds, you throw them away. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this stuff was 
tossed and they used it for you know industrial purposes and they figured out oh we could sell this as a food product <coughs> yeah and that's kind of how repurposing waste i mean it's been the game forever yeah i mean that's how croutons made it in your salad right Oh, oh it? it was like the yeah, like crust or the, the yeah, it's the crust, the leftover. So it just was like would age and get old, and then somebody, <laughs> you know, Bro, ate you want to know something? Like, you want to know something gross? I I had a buddy that worked at a pizza place that we used to eat at when I was a kid. I don't know oh, if I, I want to hear this. this. You do? I do not. Yeah, I don't know. They you take the bread this? right and then turn it into my. Croutons? He's like, bro, don't yeah. eat here anymore. I'm like, why? He goes, the the leftover bread that people don't eat. They take it and they turn it into croutons. Mm -hmm. Now I know it gets cooked and all that stuff, so I'm sure it's you could do that. I don't think you can do that. I think they did though. Yeah, yeah I guess I they can't be legal, right? No, no, no. Saves no. a lot of money though. Margins on those croutons. <laughs> 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 you could sell the same shit twice. Like, <laughs> yeah, like an MLM scheming pizza. Hey Ooh. man, <laughs> nothing goes to waste. Terrible. Yeah, bro, that's crazy. All right. That's a real thing. Yeah, that's what he at this restaurant. I don't, I don't know if other restaurants. Oh, like a mom pause. Yeah, can't play. But we used to go there all the time. I bet time, you, you know what? I bet it was hella good, too. It was hella good. I bet the good. croutons were hella good. Everything was good. They had good video games there, too. I mean, when you think about it, your point, they cook it at such a high temperature, I bet you any sort of burn off any bacteria. Yeah, any potential or bacteria or passion. Yes, it's on. theoretically, of course. Right. Like but you don't want to know. And when you think about, yeah, anything you think about, it, it's probably uh, less waste, you know? So, I mean, I think it's, it's not a bad idea. And if we were in a, in a country or a world, a time when... Food was scarce, like you would actually. Oh, win. then you wouldn't give a shit. Yeah, if that was a community of people, and that was their food. Like yeah. you, one hundred restaurants are so weird. Like I, I, I look back and I'm like always like miffed at what I saw, <clears throat> you know, all the time. And like you'd see people that like I have a thing about other people's foods. Like Ugh, I don't, you know, mm. touch other people's food. But like some service had no shame to their game. Like they'd be going back, you know, in the back to clean up, and they'd just be eating. <laughs> Everybody else is already eating food. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I have it all that. the time. Yeah, I and that. I was just wow. like. Ugh. Uh, wow. What did you see there, Doug? The thing I'm seeing is that vegetable oil should not be used as a lubricant. Mm. Uh, it leaves a residue. But what it has been used for is like biofuel. Mm -hmm. And this is fairly recent, though. So I can't yeah, so prove what you've said, Adam. Yeah. When you're behind somebody, it smells like French fries. Damn it. That's what I get for not saving the Oh, article. Adam. You're, never. Never save you're, the you're, article. You were batting 100 there I for know. a second. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> no, it wasn't he's... even in my notes to bring up, but Sal brought that up. And I'm like, oh, that's such a he great transition. buck. You see that? That was It's my fault. Captain Defer. Yeah. Sal's, oh, it's Sal's, fault. Sal's fault that yeah. I, I didn't have that. <laughs> hey, you know what I wanted to tell you guys? It's really funny. You are, because you are getting to this. Uh, I mean, I felt like... Uh, once your your son gets to like that one and a half two from then on, I feel like every week it's funny. Yes, I feel like every week there's yes. there's there's something that he does or not. We are now at the phase where um, he, he like like where he's obviously uh, talking when saying saying a lot more. He will repeat anything you say or whatever. Uh, but the newest thing is just like he will like say a sentence that I've never heard him say before, like all at once. You know what I'm saying? Like for the very like the very first time and it just comes out of nowhere. I'm like, I didn't even know you knew that. Mm -hmm. So it's so funny to watch him uh to do that right now. And he's on this thing where you cannot <laughs> you cannot say anything to him without him it like uh like you can't describe him. If you describe him like good boy, tall, in any anything, you can't describe him without him being like, No, I'm Max. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's Max just, yeah, I know I'm Max. And I'm like, okay, yes, you're Max. I get it. I'm just telling you you're doing a good, <laughs> good boy, yeah. you're doing a good job. You know what I'm saying? Like this. <laughs> No, I'm mad. That's so cute. Yeah, no. It's Aurelius does this thing now where he wants he's so into cars that he he like he has to watch me drive off. So he sits if I leave, he goes to the front door and he sits down real patiently and he just watches me drive off and I honk the horn. He goes beep beep and I honk and I drive off. It's so cute. It's the cutest thing ever. I'll now, do you do you guys have uh certain things with your your spouses that they can just do with your child that you can't, or vice versa, something that you can just do with them, but they they can't do. Like, oh, that's have a you, good question. Do you can you think he of prefers some me to feed him? That's oh, interesting. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's see, that's interesting. To yeah, me. he likes it when I feed him. Uh, so there's that, but I can't think of too much. What does Max have his own? No, oh, there's certain things like, uh, and the only reason why this is top of mind for me is because it just happened like two nights ago where I, I came out and she looked at me and she I got like this dirty look. She's like, it makes me so mad you can do that. And I was like. She's like, I can't do that. I cannot. He wants to cuddle with her and stuff like when she's, when we're tucking him in and I can literally walk in there and say, okay, it's time for bed. Good night. I'll sit there for like two to three minutes and, and walk out and walk out. Oh, and yeah. he's still awake. He'll pop up. You can see him on the camera. He pops up. 
He sees me go in, hear yeah. him close his door and yeah. like that, and then he lays his head back down. If she does that, he he'll cry for her, he'll get up and he'll follow follow her out. And she has to like be touching him the whole time. Mm -hmm. So she there's many times where she'll be in there for 45 minutes an hour after we've read and it's bedtime and you know maybe he's a little restless and so she can't get out. But if I go in there and do that, I can I can be in there for a couple minutes, and he could still be wide awake when I leave. But it's like I kiss him and say, "Hey, that's it. It's time for bed. Dad's going to bed," mm -hmm. and then walk out. And then you know what's stay. so great about that? What you just said. Look, think about what he's getting because there's value in both, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Think about how great it is that he gets both. He well, gets the value from you, which is okay. Well, I got to do this. I got to learn how to self soothe, and then he gets the value of I want empathy. I want hugs, and when I feel well, like and it, the and the and there's. Uh, it's balanced. There's there's, gr there's mm -hmm. great there's great in both, right? So the obviously it's nice for me that that it's uh, I get an easier time doing that. But then you know what I lose out on is when he wants to come and cuddle, he wants his, he wants mom. Yeah. So like he, there's been there's been times where like I, we had a we had a busy couple days, right? And I didn't get home till really late, so I had very little time before his bed with him. And then he actually came and crawled in bed like at five o'clock in the morning. And I I, I sit up and I'm oh come to dad. No, just, and he'll like over you. Yeah, for like a minute, he'll put his head and then he'll. <laughs> Yep. See you later. Yeah, bolt on me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> because she's, you know, she is. She's the nurturer. Yeah. She's she's fostered that, which is also what makes it difficult for her to get out, yeah. you know, and to, right. to let go of him and That's not touch so him. That's so great. Like, I feel this is why I feel for single parents because they have to balance all. You that. have to try to be both. Yeah, it's a good you have to balance. balance all of that. Like, when do I push? When do I pull? Like, man, yeah. it's hard when there's two parents. Or multiple people helping to raise a kid, you yeah. can, you know, one person can be a little harder, one person can be a little softer, and the kid gets the balance of both. So, so. we had Stan Efferding on just recently, and we were talking about like training kids and all that. And so I was like inspired. I had already been kind of working with uh, my kids in terms of like, I see this this shift in their interest in weight training and like seeing what I'm doing in there. And then also oh, like, awesome. because they're, you know, they've been going through gymnastics and really working on body weight and all that stuff for quite a bit now. Uh, and Everett's been really curious about what I'm doing downstairs. And so he comes down and kind of watches me sometimes. So I had the opportunity the first time ever to teach him something. Oh, cool. And so I got to teach him how to deadlift and, and we did that with uh, kettlebells. And so I had wow. like a 50 pounder. And so we started with that. And then he did it like so easy. And so I just I grabbed my 80 pound. I'm like, well, let's just see if you can do this. And he's only, I don't even know how much he weighs, probably like 70 something pounds, right? And so he just rips it up like nothing. And he's so proud of himself, you know? And he's that's like, oh, and I, I was like cueing him the whole way and I videoed it and everything. So oh, we, that's great. we caught his Isn't very first deadlift. Yeah, oh, it was pretty so great. Cool. I, yeah, I was pumped on it. And the best part about that is that, you know, the way you got to introduce that, that yeah. he came down to stairs to see what you're doing, not like the the dad who that has to be such. A, and I'm not there yet, right? So we'll see. Like one of the challenging things I imagine is when there's something I want my son to do, but then I also know better than. I mean, I, obviously I've experienced that a little bit with the 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 sports and like trying to get him to do that. Like I know better than to like force it down his throat because yeah. then he'll reject it, right? So mm -hmm. I have to be like. Try, hey man, I'm playing ball over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Dude. He's like, cool, dad. I'm not yeah, interested. Yeah. Meanwhile, Aurelius is like throwing everything. I know. I get videos and... of Sal's kid like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh my god, dude. This guy did needs not to get come to hang out. We got him. Uh, yeah. You know, that's, I, that's, that's why you got an uncle. So well, what it. I do notice about my son that is like me. I was a very late bloomer, <clears throat> and so. Uh, I, I, he, he things, I mean, he, he, he spoke late, he's talking later. Uh, he literally, I have a video of him riding around. Like we've had a, one of those strider bikes forever. Mm -hmm. And my best friend's son, who's a year ahead of him, shit, two years when his son was like one, as soon as his kid could walk, he already thought it was cool to be walking around on the bike. And then mm -hmm. like, by the time he was two, he was going down hills and then putting his feet up on it. Like, I mean, Max has been like, nah, <laughs> like, and he's just now Get, he'll grab his bike and he'll go run around the house and stuff like that. You know, he's over three years old now. So he's just been kind of, so there's still like hope, right? It's Katrina, that's how Katrina always runs. Just, you know, you'll wait. He'll he'll eventually want to or he'll find interest in it. But yeah. yeah no matter yet. what he's going to do though, you're going to find, it's going to always make, you know. Well, yeah, proud. no, I mean, yeah. I, the things that he, I mean, he loves puzzling. He's into the the music. And so, I mean, I'm, I have He's interest. got all the creative sides. Yeah, for sure. Right. <laughs> Hey, check this out. Look, you're into health and fitness. That's why you listen to this podcast, but maybe you enjoy the occasional glass of wine or beer. You're connecting with friends. You know, there's perfectly healthy ways to consume alcohol, but sometimes they don't make us feel too good. Well, check this out. There's a company called Zbiotics that makes a 
probiotic drink. It's genetically modified and patented, by the way, so you cannot find this anywhere else. And what this probiotic drink does is it helps break down acetaldehyde in your gut. What's that? Well, that's some of the negative byproducts uh, that are produced when you drink alcohol. And if it gets into your bloodstream through your gut, if it by, if it goes through your gut, your liver doesn't break it down, goes through your gut, gets in your bloodstream, causes all kinds of issues, can wreak all, all kinds of havoc. But if you take Z-Biotics and then drink alcohol, you break down the acetaldehyde and you don't get that stuff in your system quite as much. Check this company out. This stuff really works. Go to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash mind pump. And then use the code mind pump 22 for 10% off your first order. All right, here comes the show. First question is from Saksham Nigam. How to get the Christmas tree back, especially the lower back, lower lats? Uh, that's a question for Justin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah put some he's lights like, on you. He's like, what the hell is that? Yeah, what yeah, is what that? the hell is that? So for people who don't know what they're referring to, and this was- a, This was cool the first time you ever you ever built oh, the back sure. enough to see this. This is bodybuilding, right? So bodybuilders made this popular because it really developed muscles, and they also got really lean. And what happens is when you bring the arms back and contract your lats, you'll see the- insertions of the lats and the erector spinae in the lower back. So hopefully we have a picture up of what this can look like. And they call it the Christmas tree. But really what it is, is you're looking at a well-developed lower back, lower lats, and low body fat percentage. So if you want this look to your lower back, you got to have muscle and you got to get shredded. You have to get really lean. I would say the most important it, in, the, in this specific one is getting lean. I mean that's gonna be the hardest part. Because right? you have lats, and if you just yeah. get shredded, you're right. gonna see. And the and the and the more pronounced the lats are, the more pronounced and, and the more pronounced the lats are, and the more shredded you are, the more pronounced the. Christmas How tree lean? Is. I you probably you definitely have to get single digit body fat for this for yeah, most people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get well. I get kind of. I get pretty lean here pretty easily. I would say. So I for oh, me really? it's like seven percent. So this, this happened. So when I was competing. uh my low back fat, in fact, there's like a, I don't know if this is anybody who's competed. Maybe they have friends that like the, in the competitive world, like that's like you, your buddies that are all like competing and into that, like that, like the, the way you check someone real quick is their, their low, they're low back, yeah. their low back mm. right there. Cause that's <laughs> like, Justin the, loves this. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you go up to your buddy to you check his low back. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about that? Justin? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put my ornaments on you. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's like, what the hell kind of friends? Are you I mean, what, the, what's the, happening? The, the point of me bringing that up is that that's like one of the last places for body fat on yep. men to typically go. Yep. And so, yeah, it's and, and it, so it's like this badge of honor to, to have seen a, the Christmas tree on your back. It means you've got to a serious low single body, body fat uh, percentage in order to even, and you have to have a developed back. So the combination of having developed back and getting shredded. Yeah. So if you're a guy and you want this, you, you're probably going to have to get into at least the 5% body fat range, not the kind of leanness that I would even consider for most people healthy. Now that doesn't mean... You can't do it in a more healthy way, and it doesn't mean you can't get there and then get out of there. I definitely think staying there would be not a good idea for most people. You start to notice I, I also hormone th issues and all that stuff. I also think there's um, there, there's a bit of a genetic component here too. Like, so I had like a pretty crazy uh, Christmas tree when I was competing because, and a lot of that was because I had such a tiny waist mm -hmm. and I had really wide shoulders. So. The more exaggerated that is, the more pronounced this is gonna this is gonna be. So also, if you have like a if you have boxy hips and you carry and you carry uh, extra body fat on you, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get to this it, place. It probably has more to do too with your lat insertions. You know, um, low you have to be more specific. Yes. Yeah. So lo low lat insertions, uh, so long muscle bellies um, is typically what you'll see with bodybuilders. Um, it gives them the, the, this bigger look, uh, for example. And you can have lats that attach high or attach lower. It doesn't affect performance. You're still going to perform, you know, you can still perform great either way. But bodybuilders typically have really long muscle bellies, so low attachments of the lats. And so when they're developed and you're lean and then you do your, you know, your where they squeeze their shoulders back pose, you'll see this kind of shredded um, low back area. And again, you combine that with the erector spinae. But if you want this, you're going to have to get shredded. What does that mean? You're going to have to track. You're not going to get down to 5% body fat without really counting things. It's just yeah. not. You I mean you can get down to 10%, 11% without counting, just doing a good job with healthy eating and good training. When you get down to 5%, like you're going to have to start counting calories. Yeah, it's less about the uh, an exercise. Like, I know this person is looking for I us know. to give them an exercise, like, you know, do low well, I mean, back, what, do, do good mornings or low back extensions. Like, it's not that those things won't help. Yeah. 
you know, develop their erector spinae and stuff like that. And, and, and same thing, same pull-ups and deadlifts, all those things build your, but what is going to give you that? Like I, I, if this person that's asking this question, if you've been working out for a few years consistently uh, and train your back consistently and you get shredded, you'll, you'll have, you'll this. have it. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Doug, look, look up flex Wheeler Christmas tree, low back. Let's use mm -hmm. that picture. Cause that's a really, really famous, um, him or Dorian Yates. They have the, the really famous Christmas tree look on the low back. How are they working on their Easter eggs? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Next question is from Eric Rabe. What is your favorite way to strengthen knee stability? I can squat conventionally in the 400s with great form and depth. I recently tried Bulgarian split squats and was shocked by how unstable my knees were and how low I had to bring the weight to maintain proper form. Oh, so, so this is it's not what you think. The great it's equalizer. It's most likely to deal with the ankle or the hips. That's where, it. Where this, the instability is at. This, yeah. this is not what you think. So the reason why you feel it in unstable in the knee. So first off, look at the knee anatomy. And really, the knee doesn't rotate. The knee doesn't it's bend laterally. Joint. Yeah, it, it's it, floating. It flexes and extends, right? right? So, uh, you know, and yeah, you can, we can get deeper into the anatomy of the knee, but it just bends and it, it, so it flexes and extends. That's it. You can't twist it. You can't bend it laterally. Um, but what can twist and what can bend laterally? Well, the hips and the ankles. So when those are unable to stabilize in those directions, if your hips are having trouble or your ankles having trouble stabilizing twisting forces or lateral forces, then what you'll feel are the lateral ligaments or the meniscus of the knee because now these ligaments are trying to prevent your knee from twisting in half or bending laterally. And so it's going to feel like They're knee hard instability. To stabilize, yeah. But it's not knee instability. It's hip and ankle for the most part. Now, you can have knee instability <sighs> if you have imbalances in your quadriceps and your hamstrings and maybe your, your patella, which is your kneecap. Um, is tracking improperly and all that stuff. But that's probably not what's happening based off this question. Squatting 400 pounds with great form and depth, then I go to a Bulgarian split stance squat. What's happening here? One leg is in front of the other, and I'm probably getting lots of lateral tension, right? My knee wants to go out one mm. way or the other, or maybe rotating. Maybe even my hips are a little unbalanced, and so I'm feeling this twisting uh, you know, force on my knee, and my knee doesn't do that. So what's feeling the pressure? My meniscus my lateral ligaments, um, those are the things that I'm feeling, and it's going to feel unstable. It's not going to feel right. Well, yeah, the simpler way to say this is that when you when you do Bulgarian split squat, the ankle and hip are challenged with stability. When you do it bilaterally, both feet on the ground, you are you have that you have way more stability with both feet on the ground. Especially if that's what you train with. Right, so you're not you're not challenged very much there. The minute you go into a split stance like that, now not now both are being challenged. Both ankle and uh, stability and hip uh, stability are being challenged. And this could be as simple as good priming movements before. Yeah. So if you actually uh, prime those two areas really well, like the stuff that we have in Prime Pro, and then do maybe like a, a little bit of strength exercises for it, which you're going to get that by doing some prime Lateral movements. Lateral sled drags. Yeah. Or sled drags my mm -hmm. favorite now. This is, like I mean, this is what people don't realize. The body has these governings, like this, this, these checks and balances to be able to allow for, you know, more force production, more strength. Um, and it, it won't allow for that if there's instability there that's that's glaring and it's obvious. It's going to reduce that substantially to keep you safe uh, and, and, you know, and, and, and manage you appropriately that way. Because, you know, it, so if you're in a stable environment, you're going to be able to do a lot more weight uh, and be able to, you yep. know, overcome that because your body will produce, you know, enough force to overcome that. But, you know, in that situation, you're not going to be able to do as much weight because it's already the, all those factors are moving against it's, you. I, I love though questions like this because this is this is the part of training that I really enjoy. Is yeah, because for them intuitively it's their knee. Well, I feel it in my knee. Yeah, yeah. They have no idea it's hip and ankles. Yeah, and and in, in, and here's the thing that happens, right? So this where injury occurs is when people ignore this. They, the, the instability is there, but then they know they're really strong. They can squat 400 pounds. So doing, you know, 20 pound Bulgarian, that seems so sissy. So I'm going to load it. Right. And they still load it instead when, because they know they have the strength in the quads and the glutes and the hams to, to drive more up than their body weight. And so they assume that they can just keep stacking on, but they, what they haven't addressed is the stability in the hips and the ankles. And now something's got to give and your, and your body's already yeah. trying to tell you because it's all un unstable and wobbly. Mm -hmm. It's trying to give you the signal like you don't have good hip and ankle stability. Now get more stable and strong from doing those. Come back to your bi-loaded uh, squat. Wow. Like what What a difference in how much more weight you can it's lift. It's literally like if you've ever driven a car and tried to go as fast as the car will allow you and then you hit the rev limiter. A lot of cars have a rev limiter. They can go faster 
than than their the manufacturer will allow you to. So you'll drive, and you're like, oh my god, I'm going fat, and then all of a sudden brrr, the engine kind of shuts down. Your body's got rev limiters too, yep. and one of the rev li limiters is, and this is one of the main ones, is we're not going to let you lift more weight than we think is safe. And if you don't have stability, that's that's what your body's going to do. So you're not going to be able to lift as much on a Bulgarian because your body's rev limiters are kicking in way early. Now you go past it, like Adam said, injury. Now I hurt myself. And by the way, when I hurt myself, it's my knee. And right. so I'm gonna, it's going to continue to reinforce. I have, I have a bad knee. Correct. Yeah. It's going to reinforce the idea that it's my knee. No, it's probably not your knee. It's probably the joints around the knee that can rotate, that can bend laterally, that don't have the strength to support you in those directions. So those ligaments were doing it and those ligaments gave out and now you got hurt. Next question is from Luca Curran. Can you do too much low intensity cardio? I'm currently in a muscle building phase, averaging around 17,000 steps a day and my strength is going up, but my weight is the same. Should I decrease my steps or not worry about it? If you want to gain, <laughs> decreasing your steps, you'll probably gain. I mean, 17,000 is a lot. You could bring it down to 10,000 and still get plenty of steps. I'm 17 years old, six foot and 115 pounds. Is that right? Yeah. That's what it says. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely decrease the steps, but I would also bump my calories Bro, way through the roof. Lean, lean. Yeah. Yeah. I would bump the calories. I would um, reduce the steps. But the question, the main question is, can can you do too much low intensity cardio? Yeah. You could do too much of anything. Mm -hmm. Well, like, where, 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 and what, why I'm, pointing out that he's six foot tall and 115 pounds and he's doing 70,000 steps. This, he's probably where it's detrimental to someone like this is this person's probably potentially trying to build muscle. I would assume. Yeah. Cause mm. they want to get more weight and doing that, that many steps, you're burning, burning way more calories, calories. Yeah. and you're probably having a hell of a time eating enough to actually put on, uh, on weight. So and here is a case where even though we encourage our audience for the generally to walk more and more activity. Uh, here's an example of where uh, is exception to the rule. I would tell this kid to stop, stop moving around. So if you, if your goal is to build muscle and put weight on, cause you're 115 pounds mm -hmm. and six yeah, foot just tall, lift weights. Yeah. Lift weights and, and, and do not go out of your way to add more activity and steps in the, uh, I mean, I wasn't this extreme lean, but I was like, I think I graduated high school at 135 and like six foot. So I get it. I, and yeah. I played basketball. And like one of the first things that put size on me was just stopping playing so much basketball because I was burning so much. Yeah. I, yeah. It's interesting. He's gaining strength at the same time too. But yeah, to, for him to want to gain size and, you know, that being a calorie issue and him like doing like adapting to such a high amount of calorie burn, you know, that's, that's definitely something to manipulate to then gain well, the size. Well, at 17, part of what he may be seeing in strength gains is just the, the CNS adapting to it's it. It's all neural adaptation. Yeah, yeah, it's mostly that. Which He's eventually can lead to muscle if you feed yourself. Right, exactly. right, right. That's just it. It's but that, he'll, he'll probably... Still Stay positive. He'll probably stay stuck this way until he gets to a place where he's actually consuming more calories and he's burning every day. And so, and I, that's the question is about his scale weight is staying the same. Yeah. And I'm assuming that why he brought that up and gave us his weight is I'm trying to gain some weight and am I, am I potentially doing too much less? Like, yeah, you don't need to be doing any. Yeah. Real when cardio. I was 17 and I had been working out already at this point for a few years, I think it was a hundred and I want to say 170 pounds, uh, about six foot. And I had to eat. I you graduated to, high school at 170? No, I graduated high school uh, one closer to 190. But I had Whoa. to. Well, I, remember, I, yeah, bro, I, was, I was, one, was 185. Yeah, but I was obsessed with with building and gaining. Wow, like, you guys were so much bigger than I was. Yeah, yeah. What? Wow. Yeah, no I know. Uh, bro, but, I graduated high school at 135. Yeah, but, you, yeah, but you, didn't, you didn't really lift. You played lots of sports. You weren't I mean, I started great, to bloomer. lift a little bit. Uh, towards you, my it was in, mainly in your 20s though when you went yeah into yeah, yeah 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 i was I mean, like, I mean i still grew out of high school so i graduated like at six foot that's also then true I went to six three yeah. and like i got to six foot by the time i was a freshman and mm -hmm. that was it i stopped growing oh see i was five three as a freshman wow five three as a freshman and then i got i shot all the way up to like five eleven my junior year god how hard i mean it would be hard for you to gain weight because all the calories probably when you're growing your height at that and point. i was a, like right. super active kid I yeah mean, no all i did was constantly. lift and but to gain weight, I had to consume north of thirty five hundred calories easily. It just it just wouldn't happen unless I ate a ton of food yeah. because of that age. So that, the reason why I'm saying this is for this kid right here who's, who's, who's uh, you know wrote this question. Look at how many calories you're eating every single day and mm -hmm. bump them by at least five hundred, maybe closer to eight hundred calories a day. That will make a huge difference in the weight gain. Huge, and you have to do it consistently. Here's the key: some kids will do this and they'll do it for like three days yeah. and then they'll fall off for two or three days, like. Every day, day in and All day the out. High school kids That's I train, it. yeah. They're yep. just terrible at the consistency factor. Next question is from William Brake. 
what are the indicators that I am training with the right volume? Okay, so you're progressing, you're getting stronger, you're getting better at your lifts, and then here's the biggest one. You feel good. Yeah, just so you don't have aches and pains. You feel good. You're not sore. You're not lethargic and burnt out and tired. You don't need tons of pre-workout just to make you, you know, get you through the workout. You feel super energized. You feel healthy and you feel good. Now, here's the challenge with that. This is I still get challenged with this to this day. I'm 43 years old. I've been doing this forever. When I feel good and I feel energized, the first thing I think is more. Let me add more yeah, yeah. because I feel so good. I could do more. That's a huge mistake because then you start to go down the other side, which is the, the point of diminishing returns and then negative returns. Actually, we'll start to get less for time spent and then I'll push to the point where I start to get backwards with my progress. So those are the main things. It's like you got to feel good. The, the other challenge that people have with this too, though, is actually uh, applying too much volume right out the gates. Right. So, yeah. And, and we haven't said it on the podcast a long time. Mm -hmm. I've been on here many times saying that, you know, our, our goal is to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. So if you're just getting started and you're trying to figure out like, how do I know I'm doing the right volume? Well, the right volume is as little as possible to elicit change. So if I'm actually doing just a few exercises and my body is slowly building muscle, I'm burning fat, I'm getting fitter, I'm getting leave stronger, it. leave it until you start to see that progress slow or stall and then increase volume. And that was something that I didn't understand for a really long time. I always went to the whole, if I feel good, I can do more, do yeah. more, more will get me more muscle when, again, it's not like that. It's like this fine dance that we're, that we're doing. And if you are applying too much volume too soon, you may not see the, the, the negative things like the, the joints hurting and maybe even stalling of progress yet, but you're doing more than you need to in order to elicit change. And so keep that in mind. It's not about how much you can do to get results. It's about how little you can do to get results. Yeah. Literally, that's what it's all about. Because doing more or going past the point of ideal means you're going to get less and worse results. And then you combine that with the fact that you're using more time up in the gym, wasting more time in the gym. It's it's like a ma it's massively inefficient. It's a It's a terrible approach to exercise. But it's a tough one because, again, when you feel good, Mm -hmm. Especially if you love exercise, you think, well, I can do, I can do more. By the way, before you add volume, because I know you said that, Adam, like you feel good and your progress starts to stall, add volume. There's a lot of things you could do before you even add volume. Yeah. Change the exercise, yeah. add the load, uh, make the exercise itself more intense. Just your rest periods. That's it. it. All the acute variables you can manipulate. Before uh, adding volume. Before adding volume, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that you guys pretty much nailed what I was going to say anyway. So. Well, I mean, I think where this comes... Adding volume is one of the simplest, quickest ways to build muscle. It's the it's the it's the best formula for that. Like in fact, I didn't become like a big volume tracker until the, the competitive days because that's when it really started. Like when I had to go show over show, and if I was going to win, I had to improve every single. And that for the first time in my life, I had to get that crazy about it. Where I was now. What's the there's a formula that you used? What was it? It was weight times sets yes, times reps. Yeah. Sets, reps, weight, and multiply all of them out. That's for, your total volume. Yeah, for and I did that per muscle group, right? So if I and then and then what I would do is uh, each show I would go, okay, I'm gonna try and improve. I would maintain the rest of like maintain my volume on the on my other muscles, and then the one I'm focusing on, I would drive volume up and I would creep it up over the weeks leading into uh, my prep. How was there a number of volume that you would aim for? Like you're not gonna do a crazy jump in volume was no it like five percent very or? little okay it was very as long as it was going up. in fact the the goal was always to every week because here's what's, what i found what was interesting so the goal was always to make sure i at least hit the same volume if not just a tiny bit more tiny bit okay. yeah because mm -hmm. what i had found when i first started tracking just like with nutrition and you like so you, so you have some eye-opening moments is that i was like wow and i've brought this up a long time ago on the show like what i found is that we in our heads we think we're progressing volume a lot of times and it's like, you just have a good, you had a, you had a good week, but then what ends up happening is it corrects. It's, it's interesting how, when you're not tracking, you're not paying attention, how easily you kind of fall into homeostasis yeah, where you mm -hmm. fall into like a volume you like. And what I found when I first really started tracking diligently, I was like, oh, I, I actually kind of do this. 
I'm not doing this, right. you know, or even like yeah. this. Like, and, I, and that's what I was. So what I wanted to do was like, okay, here's the beginning of my training. Here's my total volume, and it doesn't matter the number, right? Because I don't remember what my train. It depends on how strong you are, because obviously weight and rep weights going to go up, right? If you're stronger, the total volume you move really matters on where you. Just like our diet, where am I at now? And then how I how do I tweak from yeah. there? And I, so I would figure out where. Okay, this this total volume on all these muscles gives me this physique. Okay, I want a better chest. So this now the training protocol of the next three to four months, I've got to maintain the volume on everything I'm doing and slightly increase it just a tiny bit on my chest week over week. And when I was tracking, again, what I had saw in the past was I, I would typically do this where now the goal was to just barely. Now, one thing it. I want to add, because again, the formula for those of you that missed it, it's weight times sets times reps. Now that's within a an appropriate or reasonable rep range. And the reason why I say that, so I would go five to 15 reps is where I would stay within because you can mess with this formula by doing like a hundred reps with a lightweight. Now it looks like you're doing tons of volume, but a hundred reps is not really muscle building. Right? Sure. So, cause you kept your reps within those reasonable ranges. Yes. And, and, but within that, then you would do the formula. Well, now what I, what I really did was I, I followed our like maps protocol as far as our, our foundational training. And then this is, I mean, I, this is how we built aesthetic. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, I was following a very maps anabolic type of protocol, but then the way I modified it was increasing volume on specific muscles that I wanted to. And that is the birth of cool. maps aesthetic is, was basically how I would go after. Now, obviously in maps aesthetic, we, we, we kind of lay it out for people, and, but we know that it's going to calculate to be more volume because we're adding these focus sessions days. And so that was the, the logic behind that, that programming was, that is how I approached getting ready for a show is I had my foundational training. And then if I wanted to move, change body parts, I would just slowly increase volume on those one to two areas mm. per show. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our guides. These guides are free and we have a lot of them that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam, and you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out. And less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.